So one of the graphs that you will be creating this year is a circle graph. So we're going to go through um, just a quick tutorial on how to create a circle graph. Um, one big thing about a circle graph is that it's looking at the whole. So for example, if you were looking at your day, you would look at how many hours you spent on each thing in the day compared to the whole. Um, and it's split into different segments or parts and sometimes the circle graph is known as a sector graph as well and often with circle graphs you are converting your data into percentages so you're looking at the data as a percentage of the whole so for example we've got this information here about um, some sneakers that were sold at a sh at a store and it, they tell you how many of each kind were sold um, what you have to first do though is you have to make sense of that data compared to the whole and so what we're going to use is a tally chart now the first thing that you have to do when using a tally chart is to think about how, what the whole is. And to do that, you're going to add up the Adidas shoes, plus the Nike shoes, plus the Reebok shoes, plus the Asics, and the other. And you're going to get a total of 600. And that's really important. So the first thing you have to know is what the whole is. So Adidas, for example, would be 150 over 600 as a fraction. And to turn that into a percent, remember we just do the numerator divided by denominator times 100. So I'm going to write that in there, top divided by bottom times 100. So we're going to turn all of our data into a percentage. And when I do that, I'm going to get 25%. I'm going to do the same for Nike. I'm going to make it 192 out of 600. Now notice I don't care that my fractions are not simplified here because I'm trying to turn them into percents. So it really doesn't matter if they are simplified. I'm going to get the same percent. When I do that calculation, I get 32%. I'm going to do the same for Reebok. And when I do that, I get 10%. I'm going to do the same for A6. And when I do 108 divided by 600 times 100, I get 18%. And then my other, when I do that, I get 15%. Now, your percents should add up to a total of 100. So you could add them up and double check. The only time that sometimes you're a little bit off is rounding. So for example, if this was like 175 out of 600, that would give you 29.16666%. And so you might round it to 29%. So you always want to round to the nearest percent. And sometimes you're going to round them up and sometimes you're going to round down. And that might cause your total to be at sometimes like 99 or 101. And that's just due to an error due to rounding. Now, because we're making a circle graph, circles are out of um, 360 degrees. So what we have to do is figure out what would 25% of that 360 degrees be, or 32% of that 360 degrees is. So when you think about it, each percent, because you have 100% is equal to 360 degrees, then 1% will be 3.6 degrees. You just divided by 100. You divided that by 100, and you divided that by 100. So really, to turn it into an angle, all you have to do is take the percent and multiply it by 3.6. Um, and so that's all you need to do. You just need to get your calculator, and you need to convert each one into an angle. So 25% is going to be 90 degrees. And 32% is going to be 115.2 degrees. So this is where we would just round it to 115 degrees. 10% is going to be 36 degrees. 18% will be 64.8. So we'll round that to 65 degrees. And 15% will be 54 degrees. So again, ideally your angle should add up to a total of 360 degrees, but because of your rounding, you might be a little bit lower, a little bit higher, depending on if you round a couple of them up or a couple of them down. 
So now that we have that information, what we do next is we can actually make our circle graph. So the first thing that you do in making a circle graph is you take a, a protractor and a compass and you create a circle with your compass or if you can't do that you just find a circular object that you can trace and you make a circle. And then what you need is you're going to need to have a protractor. So I'm going to put a protractor on here Whoops, and I'm going to undo that black line that I just drew. And we can have a look at how to use our protractor. If you're having trouble with your protractor, please call your teacher over to get you to go through it, how to use a protractor properly. Um, the first thing that you do is you just start by making a line. So for example, we're just going to make a line from the center to the outside of our circle. And I didn't quite get to the outside, so I'll extend that a little bit. There we go. Okay, then what you have to do is line your protractor up with that line. And you always line it up from the center. Just going to delete that one. So when we line it up, we're going to line it up center notch with center notch, just like that. But you'll notice I need to actually line up with the black line that I drew. So what I need to do is I need to rotate my compass so that my black line is matched up. You'll also notice I want to line up the zero degrees because I want to start from zero and count my first segment, which is Adidas, which will be 90 degrees. So then what I do is I find here 0, 10, 20, I count on my compass, sorry, on my protractor, and I make a little tick at 90 degrees. And then what I can do is I can take my ruler and I can draw 90 degrees. Now my next section is Nike, which is 115 degrees. So the first thing I have to do is I have to rotate. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong thing. Don't want to move the line. I need to rotate my protractor and now line it up with my new line. Now notice as I did that, I need to make sure this middle section lines up and the lines are on each other. So right there. So again, now here, Nike is 115 degrees. So I count to 115 degrees, and I make a little tick mark. Then I get my ruler and my pencil, and I make a new line that matches up. Then I rotate my protractor again, and I line it up center, and I make sure my black line, my zero, lines up. So I want to line the line right up. And the next one is Reebok, which is 36 degrees. So I'm going to find 30, 35, 36. Now sometimes it's hard to be perfect. So you just find it as close as you can. That's about 36 degrees. I get my ruler and I make my line. And then the next one is A6, which is 65 degrees. So again, I need to move my protractor, line up. So I don't want to be like that. I want to line up the lines together. There we go. And I find 65 degrees. I put a little tick mark. I get my ruler. I draw my line. And then what I'm hoping is my last section needs to be 54 degrees. So if I rotate and line up, I'm hoping that I'm about 54 degrees, and I am. If you get to this last one and it doesn't equal what it should equal, then you need to double check all your measurements and see where you found your mistake. So now what I can do is I can move that protractor out of the way, and I have my circle graph. But I need to label. So the first section that I drew was Adidas, so I'm going to call it Adidas. Now, I could label it Adidas 90 degrees, but that's meaningless. What does it, if someone told you that Adidas had 90 degrees worth of the shoe um, company, you, you wouldn't understand what that was. So we don't actually label it with degrees. What we label it with is the percent. And if we remember, Adidas was 25%. Our next one is Nike. And if we remember, Nike was 32%. Then we had Reebok which was 10%, and we had A6, which I don't remember off the top of my head, so I need to go back and check. And A6 was 18%. Uh, 
So I'm going to label 18%. And then my last one is other, and that was 15%. Um, the other, only other thing we need to do, we have a graph, we need a title. So we need to title it shoes sold at the shoe source. And when we have a title, we always underline our title. If you wanted to add colors or things like that, you could, but your graph needs to have a title. It needs to have labeled sections with percentages and make sure you're using a ruler and a protractor. And your finished product, I mean, here it is, but it also, there's another look at what the finished product will look like. This one has different symbol or different colors um, for each section. So that's how you make a circle graph.